Is Christianity really a crutch for the weak? <gasps> Hey, what's up again? This is Brandon Cleaver, and I'm excited to bring you the third video in my Unmasking the Myths of Christianity series for the Jew 3 Project. And one of the more popular critiques of Christianity is that it's merely a crutch for the weak. In other words, its adherents are seeking to fulfill their inherent desire or need for protection through the myth of a loving and heavenly father. In fact, the German theorist Karl Marx once famously stated, religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world, in the soul of soulless conditions. It's the opium of the people. Marx is essentially saying that the temporary and deceptively satisfying effects of the drug opium is akin to those who are religious, or in this case Christian, and are attempting to appease a deep-seated need with an illusory fix. Now there's an immediate hypocrisy to this question. Those who usually lodge this contention don't believe in God. Well, the inverse of this assertion can also be placed at their feet. Perhaps it's the case that they don't believe in God because they have a deep-seated need or desire for him not to be real. Consider the words of atheist philosopher Thomas Nagel. He said, I want atheism to be true and am made uneasy by the fact that some of the most intelligent and well-informed people I know are religious believers. It isn't just that I don't believe in God and naturally hope that I'm right in my belief. It's that I hope that there's no God. I don't want there to be a God. I don't want the universe to be like that. In looking at both sides of this question, we find that mere desires don't affirm or negate truth. We need something more to gauge reality. And in Jesus, we're given that more. But if you'll indulge me for a moment, I'd like to go a bit deeper into the latter part of this question. Is Christianity really a crutch for the weak? Back in early 2012, I was playing pickup basketball at a local community college in the Metro Detroit area. The opposing team was inbounding the ball, so I was playing defense, of course. Now suddenly, my defender moved, and I moved with him. But when I did, it felt like someone kicked me in the back of my ankle, and I heard a loud pop, almost like a gunshot. Now, some of you probably already know where this story is headed. I looked around, and no one was behind me. But when I went to take another step, I fell to the ground in utter pain. Later, I found out what I hoped was merely a sprained ankle was actually a torn Achilles. Pretty much the worst basketball injury you could have. The physical therapy and rehab itself was much more painful than the actual injury. Yet, as I progressed through these treatments, I was given different mobility aids to assist my walking. First, I was given crutches, then eventually a walking boot. Now, I needed those aids because I wasn't strong enough to walk on my own. And in some ways, Christianity does provide an aid for those who are weak. A more pertinent question isn't whether or not it serves as a crutch of some sort, it's who are the weak. In the book of Luke, specifically chapter 5, verse 31, Jesus is at a banquet at the home of a tax collector who had recently became a follower of his. As with any banquet, there's an assortment of guests, and this one included a crowd of tax collectors. During those times, tax collectors were pariahs in society. They were perceived with great disdain. Yet it was the tax collectors and sinners whom Jesus dined with at this party. Now some of the really rigid and legalistic religious leaders scoffed at Jesus' association with these societal recluses, and they asked his followers why he chose to eat with them. And Jesus had a very revealing answer. He said, it's not those who are healthy who need a doctor, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, plenty of people who are sick aren't aware they are sick, or some just don't want help. And Jesus is saying that I have come to heal those who realize that sin, or rather immorality, is not so much out there. You know, the things that we see on TV, read about in the newspapers, or hear about on the radio, but it's within us. As Alexander Solzhenitsyn once said, the line separating good and evil passes not through states, nor between classes, nor between political parties either, but right through every human heart. It's the human heart that requires healing, that's at the center of the moral degradation and immorality that we experience and lament on a daily basis. We suffer from this weakness, and we all are in need of an aid. I think about the times in my life when I face difficulties. Perhaps you can think of some in your lives as well, and how the aids or crutches in this world 
are merely temporary. Jesus provides so much more than merely a crutch for the weak. He provides restoration, redemption, and reconciliation that extends to our relationships with each other and with Him. But all of this depends on one thing, one question that precedes just about all other questions concerning Christianity. Is it true? Or more specifically, is Jesus who He claimed to be? We'll briefly answer this question in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.